Hi everybody, my name is Emma, this is Emma Rosen Books, and today I wanted to film for you my October favourites. Um, so for my favourites videos, I have certain categories that I do each time, so those will be linked below. If there's other categories you want me to talk about, then let me know. Um, but these were ones that I picked out that just felt... I don't know, just felt right. <laughs> what more can I say? So my first category, this being a bookish channel, is books. There's two books I really enjoyed this month. These were my five star reads this month. I think these were my own five star reads. I've read quite a lot this month. Um, I'll be talking about all of this in my October wrap up next week. Um, so the first one I want to talk about is Ready Player One by Ernest Klein. Have I made that up? I'll, I'll put below if that's wrong. I don't know. Anyway, um, Ready Player One is like an homage to 80s geekiness. Um, I, I literally just downloaded this. I got it on audiobook and I downloaded it because I'd heard of it, <laughs> essentially. It hadn't ever been something that I'd like really wanted to read, but I kind of thought, oh, that'll be fun. And when it started, I kind of thought, oh, I don't know about this. But as it went on, I really enjoyed it. The audiobook is read by Will Wheaton, which is just makes it really fun. And um, as I say, I, I will review these books in more detail next week. But essentially, it's a hero's quest where um, the main character, whose name is Wade, um, he lives in a digital world, I suppose is the best way to put it. There's like a online world that everybody lives in called the Oasis. And there's this guy who um, created the Oasis and he's incredibly rich and he dies and he le leaves a, um, a challenge to the world. And um, <laughs> the, it just, if you're into gaming and if you're if you were an 80s child, I just feel like even though parts of this book were really contrived and even though it was clearly written for this audience specifically, I just think that you'll love it because it's just really fun and it's just such an homage and um, yeah, I, I to me, I mean I'm not an 80s child, let me just, I can never get comfortable, let me make, the, okay, that's better, I'm a bit taller. Um, I'm, I'm not an 80s child, I was born in the 80s, I didn't grow up in the 80s, um, so I didn't get all of the references but I have older brothers and so they were still like playing some of the games that it talks about or like using some of the computers that it talks about or watching some of the programmes and all that stuff. So I didn't get every reference but I still found it very enjoyable and nostalgic which I think is the point of it and there were a few references that just made me be like yeah that's so cool I can't believe they, they included that. So. It was one that I kind of didn't have any expectations of, and they just found it really fun. Um, so that's why I gave it five stars, just because I, I just, yeah, I found it really fun. It's as simple as that. And then, um, the other one that I wanted to talk about, which is on a whole other scale, which actually I finished yesterday, um, and this is And Still I Rise by Maya Angelou. This is a collection of poems, and... Um, Again, I'll talk about it in more detail next week, but basically she's somebody I've come across. I know two or three of her poems. I've seen quotes by her. Maya Angelou is a black, or was, sorry, she died in 2014, I think. Sorry if I keep looking <laughs> looking away. I'm just, I'm really expecting that my husband's gonna come home and I'm gonna have to stop filming. So, but um, he hasn't, but it's somebody else. Anyway, um, so Maya Angelou, was a black American lady. She died a couple of years ago. And she, if you look her up online, you'll see the crazy life that she led and the like, things that she went through. It's just absolutely unbelievable. And she writes, or wrote, she wrote poetry, she was a poet, and she wrote poetry about women, about race, about overcoming things. Her poetry is very gritty and moving and it's also powerful. She appeared to have a very kind of dignified and um, positive outlook, um, but her writing is very emotional. It's also a real juxtaposition between words that are sort of um, like slang words or written in like 
terrible example but missing the g off words and doing like apostrophe instead but you know what i mean like writing in a colloquial style and then on the other hand using like incredibly complex language um her poems are beautiful and you, in all honesty better than reading it on the page is if you look up the poems and try and find Maya Angelou reciting them herself because her voice is insane she has just this beautiful voice and the way that she infuses her poetry um with her own personality it's just stunning um so I really enjoyed this book as I say I was familiar with a couple of poems anyway um but I found it very powerful. I found there are a couple of the poems that I didn't fully understand, as in I feel like I needed to sit down and really pick it apart a little bit more. So I've kept hold of the book because I definitely want to have another look at it um, when I'm in the mood to really kind of study them. Some of them are really simple and you just get them. Others, although I imagine that there's some underlying subtext in some of them, but yeah, I definitely want to spend more time on those. So those were my five star reads this month. So the next category is place. Um, now this month I went to Plymouth with my family and um, Plymouth to me is this really special place. <laughs> I went to university there, um, my dad was actually stationed there in the Navy. When I've done a bit of family research I have like ancestors from Plymouth. I feel very connected to the place from the first moment I ever set foot in it and um, my husband and I decided to live in the South East because it made sense for work and why don't I put a K on that, for work and for family and all sorts of reasons. It made sense to compromise and live in the South East and still have access to the coast, which was very important to me. Um, but my heart belongs in the South West and it, yeah, it just is. It's just, it's my spiritual home. What more can I say? So we spent a few days there. It was amazing. Um, I have taken some clips and if I can edit them together into a vlog, then I will do, but it's all a bit all over the place. Um, but the specific place I want to talk about more than Plymouth, which I do love, um, is Wembury. We spent an afternoon in Wembury, that's in Devon, it's just outside Plymouth. And Wembury is this stunningly beautiful place. It's um, this beautiful, um, like, cove? I don't think that's the right word. I don't know. Um, and there's an island, bay. That's a better word. It's a bay. In fact, it's called Wembury Bay, I believe. And there's this island called the Mewstone in the middle that's very framed. It's very dramatic when you drive up to it and when that view is revealed to you. Um, the beach is a sandy beach and, well, it's like a fine stone. And there are lots of rock pools. Um, it's got rocky coast all around it, so it looks quite dramatic. Um, there's a little stream that runs down and it is so picturesque and I spent many days there when I was a student and I wanted to go back there and visit and show my children who agreed that it's very beautiful. We spent a whole afternoon there, we went rock pulling and we had ice creams and we kind of mucked about climbing on rocks and stuff. I'd love to go back when the marine centre's open, it's closed for the winter, so I would really love to go there and visit that because I've heard wonderful things but yeah it's just incredibly beautiful. We were actually also partially there for a bit of book research but <laughs> more information on that later because I am so far away from being able to release any more news about that but I did need to visit Wembury for a bit of research for a book that I'm working on at the moment that fingers crossed will go well. So yeah that's like my recommendation if you're in the southwestern of England I know that not all of you are English sorry I always kind of make this mistake of talking about England as if like oh yeah it's really easy, easy for you to visit all these places but if you're in England and you're in the southwest because obviously that's far far away from a lot of places but if you're down there I'd really recommend Wembury it's just a breathtakingly beautiful place to spend a day or an afternoon um, on the beach um, so then my next category is activity so again I can't make my mind up and I have two things that I want to talk about. One thing I want to talk about is Plymouth Aquarium. If you're down that way do go and visit Plymouth Aquarium. I used to be, I used to volunteer there and I was one of the divers so there's a dive show in one of the tanks and I was one of the divers so um, I used to do like a little show to the public. I don't think I did it that much, I think maybe I did it like five to ten times but I loved it and I was a member there, I used to go all the time and while we were there, over the four days we were there, we spent three days at the aquarium. I absolutely love it, if you're there, really would recommend it. Um, 
The other thing that I want to recommend this month is Beach School slash Forest School. Now, if you follow me on Instagram, you will have seen that I did a book reading at a, for, uh, a beach school called Little Gulls Beach School. And it was amazing. We, I took my toddler along so that she got to play and enjoy herself there. And it was so beautiful. It's just in this in incredible place and everything was set up so beautifully. And um, being able to read my book after that kind of inspiring morning there was just gorgeous. Um, but I then went back to the same beach school with my kids in the holidays. Um, I have been to forest school before with my kids and quite a number of times with my middle child we used to go to forest school and going to beach school this month just reminded me of the things that I love about, I mean it's the same ethos. Um, the idea is that it's very child led so there are activities out but it's up to the child what they want to do and it's very relaxed so if the child feels like taking part in that activity they can do, if they want to try lots of different things they can um, or if they want to focus on one that's okay. The other thing is that it runs no matter the weather and I am such a fair weather person although I love being outdoors I just am a bit pathetic especially when it comes to wind so <laughs> being forced to go outside and spend time with my kids just wrap them up and go out anyway and be outdoors for the sake of being outdoors rather than we're going somewhere and actually enjoy the bad weather I think is really good for me and for the kids and doing something that's all about enjoying natural materials and being in nature um yeah definitely a thing that I would like I'd like to go back and also that made me think about what we do and that we don't do that really and we really should we used to go on a lot of just dog walks and that and we just don't we don't do those kind of slow paced outdoorsy things of let's just go outside and enjoy being outside aside from the kids do play in the garden a lot but I think that there's definitely a space and actually when we were in Plymouth the friends that we were staying with they do things like just making some coffees and going and sitting on the beach and drinking coffee and we don't do things like that of just going hey let's let's just pack our breakfast up and go somewhere beautiful and sit and eat breakfast outside um, and me and my husband talked about it and said maybe we should look at not just being like let's do an activity let's do an activity all the time but just let's just do something slow and just go somewhere nice and see what happens um so going to beach school and also kind of seeing how my friends treat the outdoors definitely made me think about that a little bit more but beach school forest school all that kind of stuff is definitely something that i want to indulge in as an activity with my family um, a little bit more in the future. My next category is channel. Again I can't make a decision. I've got a couple of channels that I want to talk about, some bookish and some not. Um, one channel I want to talk about is Dane Reads. So Dane and I did a book swap this month so he's been talking about my books. I'm going to be reviewing his next month. They were excellent and he did such lovely reviews of mine. I will link some videos below and his channel. He puts videos up nearly every day and I really enjoy his videos. What I like about how he talks about books is that he tends to do it in kind of a vloggy style so he'll talk about it while he reads it rather than I tend to sort of think about it and review it later um, and I think that that affects how you talk about the book so I, I like that um, and there's lots of things I enjoy about his channel. He, um, he gets a cat to pick the books that he's going to read which I like. He keeps all of his books, he's got a lot of books um, but yeah and I think you know we have little bits in common, he's musical, I'm musical, there's, yeah, stuff. So I do, I enjoy his channel, I would definitely recommend checking him out. Another one I want to recommend this month is Lauren Wade. Um, she, there's something about the way that she talks that I really like. She talks a lot about feminist literature and in fact that's why I'm recommending her this month because I watched a video that I don't think she brought out this month and it was called something like feminist book recommendations or like books to get you started in feminism something like that I'll link it below and I thought it was really excellent she gave a real range of books she explained them very well there were definitely some in there that I really want to read there um, and I actually hadn't read that much of them I think I'd read a couple um, I definitely found it thought-provoking 
and yeah, added to my TBR. But in general, her channel is really, really good and I would definitely recommend. And then finally, I don't only watch bookish channels and I'm thinking about making a video in the future about non-bookish channels that I watch. Um, but I wanted to recommend one that I've just been really enjoying. I've watched her for ages, but this month I particularly enjoyed her channel. And that's Brummy Mummy of Two. She, it's like a lifestyle channel. She's got two kids, she lives in Birmingham and she talks about like housey stuff and kids stuff just living a life kind of stuff. What I really like about Emma Conway, who, who has it, first of all, we have things in common. She is an ex-teacher. She was an RE teacher in secondary school. I was a biology teacher in secondary school. Um, but I feel that she's like not living like this glitzy YouTuber life. Although she does go to some amazing events every now and again, she obviously does get amazing opportunities because of YouTube, because she does have a reasonable following. I say reasonable, she has an amazing following. Um, but she does live a very normal life. She lives in like a normal, I mean obviously normal, but she lives in like a regular house. She's in her 40s. She's not super glam. She's not like a tiny size 8 or something. And I also love the fact that on her Instagram, her Instagram's brilliant by the way, um, and on her YouTube channel, she will be on there with like no makeup. She pulls stupid faces. Like she's not constantly trying to make herself Instagram perfect and I really love that um, and uh, it's just something about her personality. She's also very funny on Instagram every Friday they get a takeaway and she does a, a dance with her prawn crackers and they are hysterical and although there's a lot that I don't really have in common with her like I don't have the same obsession with Gary Barlow. I like mugs maybe not quite as much as her. I'm not that bothered about Disney I'm sorry. <laughs> I like Disney. I like the songs but unless we're talking about Mary Poppins, I can take it or leave it. So yeah, we're not like soul sisters, but we do have stuff in common. Um, but I just love her style. I find it very relaxing to watch her videos and she's just very down to earth. And there's something about watching them that I just find, I don't know, enjoyable, cathartic. It's fun. I like it. So those are my channel recommendations this month. My next category is food. Do you know, I might even take food out of these categories because I don't blooming know. What have we eaten this month that's good? Um, we, I went to the third best fish and chip shop in the country and I think that means that it's the third best in the world. Those were some good chips. So chips, <laughs> can I include chips? What the hell? We've been trying to think about eating more healthy food actually um, and cooking more, well no we cook anyway, but like cooking, cooking stuff that requires preparation. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think it's specifically, there's not been like a particular meal that I've really adored, but we're definitely focusing on eating more things as well, like, and they're not fancy foods, but like fancier foods, like having olives with our meal, like the simple things that jazz up something. Oh, I've made meatballs, but we've got olives on the side. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Um, yeah, there we go. I ate a really good ice cream in Wembury as well. It was a clotted cream ice cream and it was absolutely the bomb. So yeah, nothing specific except the third best fish and chips in the world. I didn't have any fish I should have done. Although we did see a seagull. <laughs> flew down and stole a man's fish, which was hilarious. Um, my next category is TV. We have watched Naffle TV this month. Uh, honestly, this month has actually been very complex, very up and down. Um, a lot of stuff going on, a lot of like emotions and stuff to do. And um, we haven't watched as much TV as we, well, we don't watch much anyway, really. Um, things that we've been enjoying, I would say stuff we've been enjoying as a family. So that's Strictly and Bake Off. I actually sometimes find this time of the year a bit stressful because we're trying to keep up, strictly in particular because the shows are long and then you've got to watch the results show and try to find the time and actually me and my kids tend to fast forward the judges comments because of every all the content that's the bit where we can kind of figure out from the synopsis if that makes any kind of sense but you, you know if you fast forward those bits it makes the show maybe like an hour and that's a bit more watchable. Um, and then the results show we literally watch the dance at the beginning and then fast forward and watch the end. So because otherwise we can't, we just can't fit it in. Um, Bake Off I haven't actually really got into as much as I normally do. I think my concentration hasn't been great this month um, because there's been a lot on um, and 
so I found it really hard to focus I don't actually really know what anybody's name is and I can't remember anything like I can't piece it together um so mm. but it's been nice sitting and cuddling up with the kids and watching it I think I've just spent too much time on my phone while the TV's on because I'm just like I don't know it's been one of those months so yeah those are the things that we have been enjoying as a family um, the Apprentice as well me and my husband have been watching we do we like The Apprentice even though like it's always the same thing I just found out as well that Alan Sugar writes his own jokes <laughs> like all the dad jokes on it I always thought they were written for him but he writes them himself. well doesn't write like comes up with them so he's some kind of punny master so yeah like all the those kind of shows um just kind of you know things to watch just just stuff like nothing exceptional or inspiring just you know like cozy tv um music is my next category what music have i been enjoying this month there was something there was something that i was madly into and now what was it i can't remember hmm i was ranting on about some piece of music and i can't think what it was so what I'm going to say is the last thing I listened to actually, which was Walk Off The Earth, they've got two new um, lyric videos out on YouTube, I really like Walk Off The Earth, I'm so gutted that um, Beard Guy unfortunately died, I think at Christmas maybe, last year, because I love Beard Guy, if you haven't checked them out they're an amazing band, I'd really love to see them live, um, they've just got kind of that hippie-ish vibe that I really enjoy, kind of half acoustic but quite funky, um, yeah I really like them, they're a Canadian band. Um, I will obviously link them below. Um, my favourite song of theirs is Red Hands, I think, so I'll link that one. Sorry the lighting's a bit yellow, it's because it's the evening and now the nights are drawing in because, yay, I live in the Northern Hemisphere. <laughs> Northern Hemisphere. I live like, you know, you know, short days. <laughs> I don't know can't do words so I've got like artificial lighting and naff all outdoor lighting also another favorite is my purple hair I had um blue under under hair <laughs> because I had it dyed the same colors that were on the cover of my book milk when I launched that book so that was like a year ago and I had that for a few months and then I've sort of let it fade out so the last few videos you'll see it probably looks a bit gray and so uh, I thought I'd have it a new colour so I've got it sort of purpley pinky which I really like so yeah purple hair because purples and pinks last last really well um, and I'm hoping that they'll last until I kind of grow my hair out a bit more and then I can do something else <laughs> so there we go what's my next category um, I talked about music podcasts again I'm not going to be able to make a decision up I've been listening to a few podcasts this month First of all, my dad wrote a porno is back. Love my dad wrote a porno. Um, so that one, I've probably talked about it before, but I just think it's hysterical. Um, it's They had, do two podcasts a month, so a month, a week. So one is reading out a portion of the book, and then another one is they have a guest in and they talk about the book, the writing, whatever. It just always makes me laugh. If you've not listened to it, listen to it from the beginning because it is just hysterical. But if you've not heard of it, basically... This guy, Jamie, who is, there's three people, there's Jamie and James and Alice Levine off the radio. I don't know the other guys from before the podcast. Um, and Jamie's dad has written a um, erotic novel and I just, honestly, it's the funniest thing in the world. Um, and their reactions to it are just hilarious. So my husband hates it, funny enough. He can't stand it because he finds that they stop too much and he just wants them to get on with it and read it, but I, I just love their reactions, so anyway, yeah, I love My Dad Wrote a Porno, that's one, the other one that I've been enjoying this month is um, Adam Buxton's podcast is back, uh, he takes a break every year, so there's not been many podcasts for a little while, um, I was a big Adam and Joe fan when I was a kid, it's a dog, um, and kid, mm, that's probably like teenager late teenager and I used to watch the Adam and Joe show when I was babysitting on a Friday night on channel 4 it was on really late and I used to think it was the funniest thing I came across it and then I was addicted to it because it's like this cult classic um and then they both sort of disappeared a bit and then they had their I think it was an XFM show and then they were on did they move to Radio 2 I think they did 
Um, I used to listen to them every week. Sometimes I would listen to them live and then listen to the podcast. I absolutely love the Adam and Joe show. I still listen to the old podcasts every now and again. Um, I just find their, their comedy so funny. So then when all of that stopped because Joe Cornish went into directing, so he made um, Attack the Block and then he's done other stuff since. He did, um, did he do Son of Rambo, I think? And he's done something recently. Ugh, can't remember. Anyway, so he's doing filmy stuff. Although he still is on the podcast usually at Christmas, um, Adam has gone out on his own to make this podcast and he interviews comedians and booky people um, and so he went to school sorry the dog's been really annoying he went to school with Louis Theroux so Louis Theroux's on it every now and again and he's hilarious um, so yeah I'm really glad that's back <clears throat> there are sometimes really serious episodes and there are sometimes some that are really silly it just depends who he has on but they're always very thought provoking at the same time I, I, I love the interviews I just find them they're not like regular interviews um, and I do find Adam Buxton very, very funny. I've seen Bug at the British Film... Is it British Film Institute in London? I don't know. Um, yeah, so in general, my sense of humour is like, that's totally it. Um, a little quick shout out for the fact that Joe Cornish has now got an Instagram page. And forget Jennifer Aniston breaking the internet. Um, Joe Cornish just... I thought he would come on and like do stuff about him and do stuff about the films he was making and oh here is me with a coffee in my fancy film life, I don't know. But actually what he's doing is showing loads of old footage of crazy films that he made at school with Adam Buxton and Louis Theroux and or like I don't know if they went to university together but yeah they went to school, they went to boarding school together and oh it's just so funny. If you're a fan uh, then Joe Cornish's Instagram page is just brilliant, really, really funny. Um, so yes, those are all my favourite things this month. My favourite thing is definitely not the shortened days and the yellow lighting and the cold. And I'm I'm not an you know those people who love autumn. I hate autumn. <laughs> I hate the days drawing in. I find it really depressing. I hate the wind. I hate the cold. I am very much, uh, when spring starts and everything starts kind of like the days lengthen, it starts warming up, I'm like, yes! So I'm like the opposite way around to a lot of these people who like the cosiness of autumn and, sorry the dog, and the run up to Christmas, no, not for me. So, no, not my favourite, um, but I'm trying to enjoy it very begrudgingly. Um, I hope that you've all had a lovely October anyway, obviously I'll be making another favourites video in November so who knows what I'll have enjoyed then. I won't be enjoying the dog sighing in the background. I'd best go and pick my kids up from school. So um, yeah, <laughs> hope you have a lovely month. Please press like if you did. Please subscribe to see more videos, usually about books and writing and that kind of stuff. But you know, I do other videos too. And what else have I not said? Like, subscribe, comment! Tell me what you've been enjoying in October and if you like any of the things that I've been talking about here. And so yeah, hope you've had a lovely month, hope you have a lovely November. See you next week for my October wrap up. Take care.